Hi, I'm Dick Cabot. Uh, if my guests should look familiar, or you suddenly have the impression you've seen this show before, don't switch, because I leaned upon Chuck Norris, not everyone would have the nerve to do that, uh, to stay and tape a second show with me, or broadcast a second show in this case. Tape sounds so dead, doesn't it? In any case, uh, Chuck Norris is one of... Um, He's a megastar. That's a vile phrase, but you have to apply it to somebody and uh, his success in films. Uh, the fact that he's a genuine athlete who was a real world champion uh, also raises him in my estimation. And uh, he's a real gent. And so anybody who would say to me, why would you have Chuck Norris on your show? Uh, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you run into any of her kind of snobbism? You know, like people say, well, I, I, oh, we never go to movies, and certainly not that kind of movies. If you meet a stranger at a party, uh, well, say, yeah, I, I've what had, do you do for a living? I've had that said, uh, that they don't go to my kind of movies, yeah. A yeah. few people, you know. Right. That, uh, <laughs> but again, that's because they've never seen them, you know. I mean, I mm -hmm. said, well, how do you know if you haven't seen one, if you would like it or not like it? Right. That's and uh, so the thing is, you have to see one and say, okay, I don't like that kind of a movie. But until you see it, you don't really know. Otherwise, they're in the same boat with the people who condemn the book they haven't read. Or? Exactly. Absolutely. But fortunately, that's, the, that's a small percentage, not the big percentage. Let's hope so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's hope it's as small as the percentage of professional martial artists who are nasty guys in real life. I agree. The last time, uh, last time you were here, we got into subject of a guy I ran into who was a champion and he was nasty to me and threatened my life in a bookstore. Most of the martial artists you meet are the humblest, nicest people you'll meet. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, you're always going to find a rotten apple somewhere. The bigger the barrel, the, you're going to find a rotten apple. And maybe this guy was a former champion. I know he's not a current champion, mm -hmm. so he may have been a former champion that got his butt whipped somewhere along the line and I right. was feeling a little resentment there. But, um, but thank God that's that's the exception to the rule with right. people like him. Um, in Thailand, I went to a kickboxing camp. That night I went to a kickboxing match, a real one in Bangkok. Mm. If I didn't see a man killed, I almost did. I, I, I'm not sure he didn't die back in the dressing room. Mm. Uh, is that a little rough? That's a brutal sport. Yeah. Uh, uh, Thai boxing. You know, the, uh, the average length of a professional athlete in Thai boxing is like five years. And I mean, they start young. So yeah, generally, they're... their career's over in their early 20s. Really? It's really, it's, it's uh, you know, when you start using your knees and elbows and all that, yeah, it's pretty doggone devastating. This guy was bleeding from the ear, which is never a good sign. Yeah. Uh, his skin had turned extremely pale. He was very, very motionless. and I got up and followed and then they wouldn't let me go in a room where they yeah. and I'm not sure he didn't go out of there in a body bag. Well, uh, they that, do have, that they wouldn't do have be unusual, would it? No, in over in Thailand, that they do have uh, uh, fatalities over there yeah. Yeah, and they're fighting, yeah. But they live for it, you know, they, they, they grow up as children just to be, mm -hmm. to have that recognition as a Thai champion yeah. and, uh, and because of that many of them, you know, suffer very serious injuries. Yeah. Your, your world championship, what, what does it carry with it when, you, when you're in that position? It can't quite be like being Muhammad Ali at, in, in, in his peak, but do you get good tables and restaurants for being a karate uh, world champion? You know what I got paid for my first world title fight here in New York at Madison Square Garden? I won the world champion. I got $1,000. <laughs> All to yourself. And plus, I had a broken no. I know I had a broken Ooh. jaw that night. Yeah. The guy got kicked in the in the jaw with a heel kick, broke my jaw, which cost me more than the thousand dollars to get fixed. So I really I lost on that. Even though I won the world title, which has been good because I've been able to use it over the years, I still uh, my jaw still had never been the same. Are you saying on the on the very night you won the championship, you that same night had your jaw broken? Mm -hmm. And the uh, guy I fought uh, got his arm broken. Oh, I was going to say, it's like the old joke, what did, what did the other guy look? Uh, mm. Wow. Yeah. So we, after so, the fight, we both went to the hospital. So you expect um, parents watching to encourage their children Not to, be to go into the sport where you can either get your arm or your jaw broken? And mm. <laughs> no, th this is the fighting field. You know, this is yeah. the sports field. There's two different things here. you got the art, right. which is the self-defense and the philosophy. you got the sport, which can get a little rough in the ring. Yeah. So. Is um, probably the largest number of injuries in... in badly taught karate and 
of, of the martial arts or, or even well-taught karate for that matter? Well, yeah, training-wise, you know, again, supervision and, and finding the right instructor who, uh, you know, who stresses the philosophy because the philosophy is the important tool here, uh, Dick. Mm -hmm. You know, the kicking and punching is only the vehicle to yeah. strengthen that individual as, an in, you know, as a person, to raising their self-esteem, raising their self-worth, teaching them how to focus their lives in the proper way, in the most positive way, teaching them the philosophy of goal seeking and realizing that there's obstacles in any goal you want to pursue and having that determination to overcome those obstacles, mm -hmm. to reach those goals. See, this is all part of the training of the martial yeah. arts. It sounds wispy, but I believe all that stuff. From oh, my, I do too. From hey. my experience with, some my limited experience with martial arts. Well, it's, really that, great it's been my philosophy uh, in life and that's really been the secret of me succeeding to the extent that I've succeeded. Well, I was going to say, did you, you had the karate, then yeah. did you apply really that consciously, that kind of concentration oh, to I'm going to be an actor and a film actor and sure. a successful Sure, I mean, I had to because, yeah. you know, everyone sees the success of Chuck Norris. They don't know what Chuck Norris went through to reach those, this level of success that I have as a fighter. You know, I mean, I, I mean it was tough. I was not an athlete. Uh, natural athlete, and I had to train harder than the average person. Nor a particularly big guy. No. And yeah, I was, I was 5'10", uh, 168, 170. Mm -hmm. And then in the acting field, I had no acting ability at all. And some of them still say I don't, but <laughs> that's a... Does that bother you there. when... Huh? When they say you have the emotional range of an avocado, that doesn't get under your skin or anything. Nah, like you know... It certainly hasn't held you back. No, it hasn't. And, <laughs> you know, the thing is, <laughs> the, the bottom the line, and Steve McQueen told us me, he says, you know, you could have the best reviews in the world, and if your movie makes a dollar, you're not going to work. <laughs> you, your movie makes a lot of money, and the worst reviews in the, your, uh, re worst reviews in the world, you're going to keep on working. So remember that. But uh, you should also remember this, that you, your, your acting is not unrespectable in your later films by any means, do, do you think? I've seen you produce tears on the screen. I don't know if they were yours, but it was convincing. Well, you know... It's Have I just fallen in your estimation by thinking your acting is good? <laughs> <laughs> you like to think so. Of course, you, you know you take pride. I don't want it. The thing is, I pr I have gotten better. There's no, I mean, the better, the more you do something, the better you're going to get at it. I've I've done yeah. 21 movies. I've been in the film business now 17 years. So naturally, I should be better at it. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, as you probably know too, the better you get, the less you feel like you know. You know, when mm -hmm. I first started in film, I didn't know anything, so I wasn't afraid of anything. But mm -hmm. as you get better, then you want to be better. It, the, you know, the horizon gets bigger the more knowledge you attain. Right. It's like they, like they show you how many pages are left in the book that you haven't read yet. Yeah, and exactly. Think, oh my God, I thought I was yeah. halfway through it. Um, but I, you know, interesting though. I just did a, you know, I, like I said, we did a TV series called Walker Texas Ranger. Oh yeah, right. And in the opening two hour, I had I did a four and a half minute monologue. On, on this two hour, uh, some of the people may have seen, you know, seen like the two a hour soliloquy of it. And but it was, but it was really interesting because it dealt with a 16 year old girl who had been raped by three guys, yeah. and this girl now is at my ranch for protection because these men have threatened her, because the a DA, DA is prosecuting them, and the two witnesses are at my ranch as well, and uh, so this girl is holding everything in. She won't cry. She won't talk. She won't do anything. Mm -hmm. And that night at my ranch. Uh, they're telling me this, and she's out on my porch. So I go out there to try to develop a, a conversation with her, and she will not talk. And so Walker, my character, is one of these real reserve type guys, and he opens up his heart to her. He starts telling her about his life as a half-breed and how he watched his two parents brutally murdered in front of his eyes. But anyway, as he's starting to tell about his pain, her pain starts to dissipate, and all of a sudden you can feel her, see her feeling his pain, and she starts to let loose, she starts crying, and she comes into his arms. So it was a really a, a, a scene that I was very proud of. So you can now take interest in the actorly part of the work as well. Yeah, the, exactly. The